Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be finishing off Siemens MicroMaster 420 drive where we're going to be looking at how to control the drive, no, control the drive's frequency with uh, two buttons and also going to look at setting up the multi-frequency thing and look at look into parameters how to do these things. And if you haven't seen our previous videos where we did the uh, remote control with the two wire control, three wire control, and also use the potentiometer and video where we commissioned the drive, set up all the mode parameters and things like that. I will be leaving all those videos in the description below. Also related manuals and all the other related things that I think beneficial for this video and things like that are going to be in the description below. Before we get started, as usual, I am just Electronics as a buyer and seller of industrial uh, uh, automation parts. If you are after any parts and things like that, please check out our website or our eBay page and uh, see if you can find what you're looking for. If you don't, definitely get in touch. We can help you out, help you out to do find it for you. And if you've got parts to sell, definitely as well, get in, get in touch with us via our eBay page or our website depending on which way you want to do it and uh, send us everything you got and we'll come back with you with some form of art within 24 hours. Other than that, let's get this bad by going. Alrighty, so the first thing we are going to do, we are going to be setting up the MOP control. That's MOP control is a push button controls, uh, push button uh, frequency control where we're going to be able to uh, go speed up and down with push buttons. To do that there's a couple of ways to do it, there's an easy way to do it, you can uh, just uh, activate the, the digital input uh, one with some sort of external relay and or, or select the switch and things like that and uh, reprogram digital inputs to show you that. Boom up, reprogram digital input uh, one, two, one, two, and three. Uh, two, uh, two and three to do 13, and uh, f uh, three to do the 14. So basically, we'll go up and down when you press the buttons. But that will be too easy to go. So, what I did, I wanted to be go deeper because I want to show you another function is that this actually, if you look at down here, it's got only five, six, and seven. Those are the digital inputs by uh, default, but you can actually get digital input four if you really want to, and I'll show you exactly how that wiring happens. So, so uh, we are still keeping the three wire control that we did in the last video for the for the time being. So, because I like a bit of a hard way, so I like digging around manuals and finding out some really cool things you can do. And by cool things, I mean, we only scratch on the surface what you can do. But we are, what we're gonna do in here, we're using the three wire control with start and stop, and with these two buttons, we're gonna be using up and down. One of them is programmed in digital input two, because one and three, as you probably watch, uh, could see in the last video, uh, they are already preoccupied with something else. So I pre-programmed that, that, that my digital input two is doing up thingy, but digital input four is actually using the analog part in here. So it's using analog three. So you can actually reprogram the analog uh, input three to be as a digital input, but there's one hit, hit, hitch with all that, so which is not really, I couldn't find any clear in, in, uh, instructions from uh, manual and things like that, uh, how to power it, but how to work with it, that thing, but, they, but common sense sort of prevail. You have to use the output from one to operate that button. So it has to, uh, the, the, the button, uh, the air source has to come from uh, one, which is 10 volts, has to come to the button, and from the button it goes back to uh, the, uh, for the analog input a three. So be aware, I'll show you the wiring now. So three wire control, again I have a digital input, uh, the, what's it, the eight, number eight. Gosh, there's a lot of mess. Number, oh, one second, let me just tidy this bit up better. Uh, number eight here is coming uh, to all the backs of the buttons down here to uh, normally open, normally close, and uh, normally up and down here. Normally up and normally close when it's my stop button. And my uh, normally closed one goes back to a uh, digital input a three, which creates my, uh, my, my stop signal there. And my uh, the, um, uh, start signal goes back to digital input one as, as, as normal per, per standard. But my... Uh, my um, uh, 24 volts signal goes down here as well. Uh, from here, then uh, the, the the up button will go to digital input two, 
and uh, as I said already the source for the down button will come from uh, analog 10 volt output and it goes back to analog input 3 down there. and that's pretty much how the wiring would work and in reality when you click the start button you are able to increment by 10 but if you hold the button it jumps up quite quickly it's depending on your acceleration the acceleration die so you can jump quite quickly and the same way you can actually come down as well and by increment of 0.1 coming out pretty you can really get a really accurate frequency by using buttons like that if you wish to do so and also obviously all other things you can change in there to control a bit better so and another thing i want to show you as you can see down here it actually saved the frequency what we've just been using but in default you are not able to do that it's not going to be doing that because by default you need to go to parameter and show you the little page where you can start playing with this and a page 75 in the manual below in the description below you can find this page in here where there's motorized potential show with the mlp controls and you can see down there and there the other things you can do with it and when we says down to MLP set point will be not saved if it stays in the zero and MLP set point will be stored if it's selected at one in a P1040 it basically, basically it's going to be updating in there so uh, if you want to change that go to parameter 1031 let me demonstrate that quickly because I'm still in a level three and there you go so if you change that to zero So now, if you start, so you get that down to the five hertz when you stop. See, it still saved all the what was in there. So now you need to manually go into the P1040 and change that as the default. So uh, be aware of that. So you can you, you can in P, by, by doing that, uh, it will automatically update if you select it to one the parameter to 1031 and if it's in the zero you can manually set where your starting point will be for the mop so be aware of that so at the moment if we want to change that we need to go to parameter 1040 let's do that come on and go 1040 as you can see there's that frequency in there and you can change that back down so it's depending how you want to control but this is how the mlp pretty much works so next we're going to do a uh, work on a multi-frequency and for the multi-frequency i am going to be going to be ditching my uh, three wire controls so because i need a bit more extra inputs for it so uh, what i am going to do in here i'm going to do a quick uh, reset again so you not that one uh, I'm gonna do the reset. Let's change that to three, two, one, and I'll do the first parameter reset. Not the full reset, just the one. So I need to re reset the base. Uh, not the mode. There we go. The not that one. Is it that one? Yeah, that one. Here we go. It will reset all the parameters back to except the motor ones. So uh, they will stay as it is. So come on, do your business. Taking his time, here we go, done. So uh, let me uh, re redo the wiring and we crack on. Okay, for the multi-frequency, we have a couple of options. As you can see, I've already done the wiring, which I'm gonna run that through in a minute, but we have options. And the first option we need to select is parameter 1000 needs to be changed to three, which will accept more, uh, fixed frequencies. And then we need to reprogram the inputs, which are 701, 702, and 703, and also 704, but we're gonna talk about that in 704 in a minute. Uh, in, in those three uh, parameters, there is options. So you can see down here, Siemens has done a nice little uh, graph in here, like the explanation. You have three, uh, three options to go for, direct selection, direct selection plus on command, and binary code selection plus on command. What is the difference between them? Direct selection will require enable button. And that enable button, it has to be some sort of input. So in our case, we, we, we want to use all three buttons. As you can see the nice station we got down here, we want to use the, all three options that we are uh, available for us to play with frequencies. And if you use enable signal, you would have to use one of the digital inputs that are here. 
and but you don't want to do that but as we are not using any analog uh signal anymore so we have used uh, i have used the 704 which is another you, you can change the analog to digital so what i have done i changed the 704 to one so that allows me to create an on command that's exactly what i have done in here i have 10 volts from terminal one coming to my selector switch down here and then is uh, 10 volts going back all the way to uh, terminal at three. So that way I will act, uh, uh, enable my drive. And as you can, and another option, uh, what I, I didn't see much of a benefit of it uh, going that way because the selection two gives you on command together with the um, uh, selecting the frequency. So I don't know, I don't know why people go that way, but some people maybe there's a use for it. But one good use where I can say you can see what sort of frequencies you are going to be getting once you'll be selecting the buttons. And in these first two groups, the group one and group two, yeah, option one and option two, by selecting two buttons together, you will get you will get summed frequency. There we go. So if you do that, say I got 30 down there, 10 down there. If you select that, it'll be 30 down there. I got 26 down there so that way you can get more frequencies out of it by this method so but i'm not sure why, why would you want to go that route if you want more than three three selections and you really want to specify the fine tune then you would go for the option three which is the binary which you can talk to talk about that in a minute so the first option we're going to need to do we need to put the drive on and by selecting any of these buttons the motor will be going to that set frequency Obviously, that can be done by selector switches. So you can see, let's see if we can get all three. Here we go, we got 36 out of it. So you sort of get a gist how that works. So let's uh, get ourselves ready for the option uh, three, which I'm going to show you how to, uh, where, and I'm also going to show you where to uh, change all your frequencies. As it, I'm actually going to show you now. Uh, to change the frequencies, you need to go to starting from, 2000, uh, from 1001. You can change them to wherever you are pleased. There we go, and, and go all the way to 16. No, is it 16? No, seven, sorry. Seven, 16, duh. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you can get seven, seven frequencies. And to do that, not to do that, once you've selected all your frequencies, you can sort of see the graph in here. If you go for the option here, when you're selecting the 701, uh, 701 all the way to 703 you need to change all three inputs to 17 and then you'll be able to use this kind of system let me let me get that quickly done and i'll show you how that works well the wiring is redone let's change all the digital inputs to do i need 17. so oh overshot again so change that to 17. I'm not going to show you the 16 because you already hopefully get the gist. And by changing them to 17, so we get thin and get back in the system. So now that 17, as you see, is 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 it's basically telling the drive use a binary code selection plus on command. So because of the on command, you no longer need sort of enable signal. It should work straight away with without as any other. So this way, you can see, here we go, my button is playing it up a little bit. You can see it selects all those frequencies. And by change, let's say we want a frequency, let's say in P01, the fourth frequency, we need to select a DIN 3, uh, no, actually, express. and the third frequency is DIN 1 and DIN 2. So there we uh, these two. There we go, it goes to 25, and it's sort of, uh, you get the gist. So uh, what, what do we get out of this one? That's a 15. It's all these frequencies can be pre-programmed and selected and you get all the way. You can get seven uh, different uh, types of frequencies, even all three buttons in here. You can see the little uh, graph in here, which tells you what are you going to be getting. So that's pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, how uh, the MOP is done and and multi-frequency. Hopefully that gives you some ideas and and then and, and, uh, types to play with and so and, and you try whatever goal you're trying to achieve you're able to achieve it 
course, there's so much more into this drive uh, to, to play with. You are more, more, more than welcome. I'll actually encourage you to play around and then and, 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 uh, do some uh, research on, on a manual. The manual is very nice, very easily understandable. At the beginning, it's a bit tricky, but once you get your head around it, it's pretty good. And it, it is, this is only the 420 version, and then the 440 version comes with a lot more inputs and outputs. There's a lot more you can do it and things like that. So definitely go out and play with it and, and have fun with it because uh, hopefully all these three videos is quite, quite uh, explanatory to you and helps you out. And uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe. And uh, if you didn't like the video, uh, click dislike and do let us know what you liked about it, what you don't like about it. Uh, obviously, the constructive criticisms help us out in uh, all the ways. So, and uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Now, we'll see you all in the next video.